Finally, you thought we're going to do a full review of the Emac Tiny Hawk. Well, I'm not. I'm going to run over it really, really quickly. It comes with a built-in FR Sky receiver compatible in D8 mode only with an F4 flight controller and a built-in 4-in-1 3-amp ESC. I have done some modification to it. You can also pick it up in the Ready to Fly version which comes with a transmitter and goggles. This is the Binding Fly version. You can check in the link in the description below to get whatever one you want to. Now you get a USB charger to charge up your battery, HV LiPo, your green light will go to your right and for normal LiPo voltage the green light will go to the left and to change that you just press the button at the back here it comes with PH 2.0 sockets at the end they do have slits on them and so does the quadcopter so you will get voltage sag I've already changed the plugs to the quad and the batteries themselves batteries because I bought extra ones you get a manual as well, you get extra grommet screws and an extra plug socket, I don't need that, and a set of stickers. Now the battery you get is a one cell 450 mAh HV LiPo battery and it's 80 to 160C burst. Yes, it's a Michael Dean plug I'm using, these are great, I used to use them years ago. Some people call them mini deans, I call them micro deans. I also picked up these batteries from Amazon. I got four of them in a pack for £20. The gauge of wire I'm using is 20 gauge wire and they do quite a good job indeed. Now to bind the quadcopter up, all you do is press and hold the bind button which is right there. Plug in the battery, set up your transmitter in D8 mode. Hit the bind button and the lights go solid. After that, unplug everything and you want to plug the quadcopter into beta flight. And the micro USB port is right here at the back, which is really, really handy. What I do is I hold underneath the quadcopter and just plug it in so the board does not move. It's running beta flight 3.5.0. You can customise all your settings and switches in there. It does have turtle mode, but I'm afraid that does not work. It has something to do with the props because it's tri-blade props. They are bringing out a four-bladed prop so they can get turtle mode to work. Now, the receiver antenna and the VTX antenna does come under the canopy. And what I would recommend you do is make a tiny little hole here. Pop up the receiver antenna and bring out the VTX antenna at the back here as well. With a 600 TVL camera at the front here which is fixed so if you want to change the angle of it you will need to, you're going to need to modify it. I haven't changed it just now because I've only flown this in the house in stability mode. I haven't flown it outside in acro mode at all. Uh, the problem that I did find at first is when you want to roll and turn, it is really difficult. You'll need to move the sticks a lot. So what I did was I plugged it into beta flight. You've got three profiles, but believe it or not, profile two and three are the exact same. But I just put it on profile three and rate two, and it flies a lot better. I'll put a video up. And the link in the description or you can just click right here and see the video of me flying in the house that's the only video that i've done at the moment and i was flying as fast as i could with this thing the the camera seemed to be pretty decent but it doesn't like darkness so it could do with a little upgrade there the vtx it's a 25 milliwatt vtx and it comes locked it's 37 channels and to unlock it what you want to do is press and hold the button just under there plug the battery in you'll see bluish lights and reddish lights come on and that means you've unlocked the full potential of the VTX but <clears throat> even though you that you have unlocked it 
It does come with smart audio as well. I change one of your channels in smart audio and get a blank screen on my goggles. And it says you've got to press and hold the button for so many seconds to change it. It was so annoying pressing that button at the back. But fortunately enough, I did manage to save the default settings. I'll put them up here so you can see them. I'll also put them in the description below. The reason why I'm saying that is what you want to do if it ever happens to you, just copy and paste those settings in the link in the description below. Plug your quadcopter into Betaflight, go to the CLI tab and copy and paste those settings in, hit enter, type save, hit enter, and that's you back to the default settings. That was the default settings for me. So I'm more than sure it will be the same for you. Now it is a 75mm brushless quadcopter and it is quite flexible. I like that. That's about the only thing I like about it because the props are underneath and they're prone to catching on stuff. I can't land on my son's hand anymore, which is a shame. I don't like that at all. And if you land on a rug, you're going to have a problem because I did and I got a lot of the rug caught in the prop. I had to unscrew the motor, take the prop off in the way you want to take it off, hold here and gently pull it off. They're friction fitted and I was sitting there with a needle getting all the hair out near the motor windings and everything and I had to be really, really careful. Also, the motors do come with ball bearings. You can oil them, it's just on the top here. One drop of oil and turn it around and you are good to go. The motors themselves are 08025 15,000 kV brushless motors and the prop size is 40 millimeters. Like I said, they are bringing, there is a second batch of these quadcopters out. Since this is the first batch, there is a problem with the the FPV signal feed. It breaks up quite a lot. The way to fix this, people were putting capacitors on the 5 volt pad. In the 5 volt pad you'll find, if you look where the receiver antenna is popping out here and I go under the board right here, I'll pop a picture up on the screen right now and you can see where I've circled out, marked there. You want to bridge your capacitor over those two pads and solder it there, and that will help with your video feed. It's not a 100% cure, but it might help a little bit in the capacitors you use, or these ones I've just linked here, and I'll link them in the description below. Now, also, People were having brownout problems. Once the quadcopter reaches down to about 3.3 .3 volts, some people were losing control of the quad. It wasn't taking stick commands. You would be inputting stick commands and it wasn't doing nothing. Now, they were also putting a capacitor on the 3 volt pad, which is right here. And I'll put a little picture up and there's a circle again. You want to put the capacitor across those two pads and it's the exact same capacitor basically. But somebody from the forums, somebody named Buster1000 found out that if you raise the scale in beta flight, if you go in the battery tab and you go to the scale, you'll see the default is 110. If you raise it to 113, that problem won't happen anymore. That means you can fly below 3.3 .3 volts. But I don't recommend that you fly below 3.3 .3 volts because you're going to ruin your battery. Not only that, I tested it myself. It ran down to 3.1 volts and boom, it dropped out the sky. Now, I'm thinking maybe if you do a punch out and you go down to that, it might drop out the sky. So be very careful if you decide to use that setting. I am going to test that myself because I have not put a capacitor on the 3.3 .3 volt pad and I'll just use those settings that I've just told you about in Betaflight. One more modification I did, I put a regulator on the quadcopter so my camera is not powered by the board, it was powered straight from the main battery pads which is right here. 
and the regulator is sitting right behind the camera with a bit of thick double-sided foam in there so it's wedged the camera in place and hopefully in a crash the camera won't dislodge and the camera is not going to press against the regulator and I'm getting a constant 5 volt to the camera and I was thinking that would help in the video feed as well and there wouldn't be so much uh, signal interference and we'll see how that goes when we're outside because I do know the faster you fly the more signal interference that you'll get I have done a flight indoors really fast I was flying the socks off this thing I cannot fly in aqua mode in the house because my house is too small and it was in stability mode still fast and it does reasonably well comparing to say my UR65 I can't fly into my end bedroom and back out again because the picture just gets so bad on any whoop that I've got at 25 milliwatts it has to be 200 milliwatts to make it into that room and back out in one piece because of the brick walls and the metal that are in here these are really old houses that are made that I am living in. When you are using larger batteries and when I was talking about rolling to the side that extra weight you will need to compensate for that it makes a huge difference because the battery is slid in at the side and that is good because when you are in a crash the battery won't pop out but like I said when you are rolling to the side with that little bit of extra weight you just need to put a wee bit more input to recorrect yourself sometimes that's the only other thing i would have to say ah one thing before i go somebody also managed to put a dsmx receiver in here i'll put that in the link in the description below as well that's it everything for the whole quadcopter and all of the mods i've done all I have to say is I wish everybody a very happy Christmas. I hope you've had a great time. I hope you have a great new year. Thanks for watching this video. Continue to watch. I'll be doing more mods on this. There will be flight footage of this and the Mobula 7 when there's a nice day. I don't want it to be damp in the ground because I know I'm going to crash it at some point when I'm testing and I don't want to be frying any boards and I want to get it done properly. Don't forget to check all the links in the description below to where you can get the quadcopter from, the capacitors, the plugs, the extra batteries that I've bought. Thanks for watching this video, my friend. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, happy flying.